that matter is settled. Yeah. I said that matter is settled. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you believe it's settled? Ah, break the Bible quickly, Genesis chapter 3. The Holy Ghost is here. Celebrate it. Celebrate it. I just feel the Holy Ghost. Is that, is that the best you can do to celebrate the Holy Spirit? Genesis chapter 3. From verse 1, we we'll read to 7. From verse 1, we read to what? We say, please let's stand up on our feet. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Yes, sir. Believe me, they, they amaze me sometimes. You see them sitting down. We have been standing since, since 2 o'clock. I just slept in the office more now this morning because of you. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. We we'll read together everybody with a voice of thunder. One to go. Now the serpent was more than any piece of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yes, yes. I thought says, you shall not have on every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruits of the tree of the garden, but the fruits of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. Yes. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day, uh -huh. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was good for her eyes, and the tree was desired to make for her she took out the fruit thereof and did it, and gave her son to her husband and did it. And the eyes of the devil were open. Now go to Genesis chapter 2, 15 to 17. Genesis 2, 15 to 17. Want to go? And the, and the Lord of God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt show it. Let me preach to several persons, tell them, don't eat that fruit. My brother, my sister, leave your seat and say that to say. student of the Bible, you will discover that the only reason why Jesus came to die was because man fell. Was because what? Man fell. Man fell. And so, if man fell and Jesus came to die, which means the main purpose of his death was so that the man that has fallen will rise again. The man that has fallen will do what? And at this junction, I just want to prophesy upon someone this morning. I receive. The death of Jesus 
will not be wasted in your life. Yeah. I mean, you will fulfill the purpose why he died. Yeah. See now, I'm not going to be doing too much uh, shouting today. There may not be too much amen offering today, but I just want to pass a message of course. Are you with me? Please look at me. When you study the book of the beginning, you will discover that from the beginning, God's greatest desire was to fellowship with the man that he has created. We are made to understand that God comes every day at the cool of the, of the evening or the cool of the day just to relate with man. Just to fellowship with man. So God's greatest desire for us is to fellowship with him. I'm not talking about fellowship today. And we're talking about constant fellowship with God. That is why when we're saying the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we always say, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It is in fellowship with God that you get sponsorship from God. It is in what? That you get what? Sponsorship from God. Hallelujah. Am I too cool for your life in this one? So man and God began to relate. But it got to a point, God orchestrated a boundary. He did what? Orchestrated a boundary. And he said to man, I know we have been relating. I know we have been talking. And it appears now that we are friends. He did what? He said, man. He said, man. I love your fellowship with me. So, in appreciation for that, I put you in charge of the garden that I have created. And man said, thank you. In other words, he had authority over the garden. But God said, in as much as you have given you authority, I've given you power over this garden, there is a tree in this garden that you must not touch. And it was very specific. He gave him the location. He said the tree is where? In the midst. In the middle. Of the garden. Praise God. Hallelujah. God set a boundary. Any relationship, whether maritally, officially, politically, or otherwise, that has no boundary, we always have problems. Talk to me, church. <laughs> we always what? Have issues. We always have problems. You must understand that for you to have a better flow with God, for you to have a better flow with people, you must understand the power of restriction. There are do's and there are don'ts. In the relationship where you are talking to someone, there is always a point to ask the person, what do you like and what do you not like? How many of you did that? Oh, look at virgins. So. 
You have not proposed to me before. How come I'm just in three persons? Why are you asking that question? You are trying to get a knowledge on how not to do those things that offend the person. So you have to first of all know those things first before you avoid them. What do you like? She tells you, he tells you. Okay, what do you not like? She tells you, he tells you. As at this point, we now have what? A clear knowledge of things to do and things not to do. And you discover that when both parties begin to avoid those things that they are not supposed to do and do those things they are supposed to do, that is what automatically gives birth to peace in the home, peace in the relationship. Are you listening to me? And every time you cross boundaries, any time you do that which affects the other person, there will be what? Talk to me. There will be what? So every relationship can work if only we can know how our boundaries. But the reason why most relationship breaks today is because human beings don't like restriction. It is not in their gene to totally obey. Am I talking too much? No, sir. No, sir. Whatever your husband said, don't do. Avoid it. Hello? Uh, Whatever your wife say, I don't like. Avoid it. And that will give birth to what? Peace. But when you are the lady begin to do those things that he said don't do, it will give birth to problem. When you as a man begin to do those things, she says she does not like it. Also, give her to what? So the God we serve, the God we are all under, is a God that has value for boundaries. That is why today we are being controlled and guided. By commandments, Exodus 20, they are all there. Thou shalt not. These are the things that God doesn't want you to do. No matter the access you have to money, no matter the access you have to ladies, no matter the access you have to men, there are things. As a Christian, you must understand that if you do that, it will break your relationship with God. Isaiah made us understand that our sin has made us far from God. Our disobedience to the instructions of God, as it were, has made God distance himself from us. And you must understand that the love of God does not eliminate restriction. The love of God does not what? Eliminate restriction. That God tell you not to 
do this does not mean does not like you. That God keeps you away from some certain things does not mean, oh, he hates you. It is even a sign that God loves you. Now the Bible made us understand that it is who God loves, he chastises. It is who God loves, he corrects. When it gets to a point where God is silent concerning you, you are doomed for destruction. Yes, sir. When it gets to a point where your pastor is silent over you, he no longer, he no longer chastises you, even when you do something wrong, you are heading to destruction. Happy is a man that has a man that can talk to him, that can chastise him. If God cannot chastise you, he cannot advertise you. Yes, It is obeying divine restriction that actually takes you out of the street. How many of you want to leave the street? You should understand what I'm saying. Divine restriction. to my wife yesterday. I said something and she was like, oh, he was in the middle of that. That revelation is stupid. So I said, explain. How many of you know that Adam was the first person God created after... Huh? Not to me, not to me. I'll go home and see. And when God created Adam, how many of you know that the serpent was around? He was among the animals. That was even before Eve came. And in Genesis chapter 2, then we read verse 15 to 17, that was the first time God gave Adam an instruction concerning the tree. Hello? Ah. Concerning what? Was Eve there? Was he there? No. Sir. Was he there? No. Sir. And the Lord God commanded the man. Uh huh. But now, who was not to you? Yet being created. Yeah. People blame him, they blame him, they blame him. After he was created, it was the duty of Adam to call Eve and said, My wife, you are free to eat. But it was not recorded that Adam told Eve. Because one thing I know about God, he does not like repeating himself. So God did not have to repeat himself again. He was expecting Adam to communicate to the woman. But it was not recorded that such conversation 
And the first time Eve had a bad dream was from the devil. Because the devil was there when God was talking to Adam. Eh? What you refuse to tell your wife, the devil will tell her, but in another version. Study that place very well, Genesis 3. It was Satan that started the discussion. Eh? When they met, Satan started by saying, <laughs> Did God tell you not to eat of every tree of the garden? Can you see the question of in, 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 in sugar, sugar caught the question? He twisted somehow. You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Oh my God. You didn't see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Satan did not specify. Yes, he generalized. Yes, every tree. So that you will not say that devil will like us out. <laughs> ah. So I know the devil showed me the dream. So he said every. So when you are talking to God, Satan is going to tell you, my sister, I didn't mention anything. I am just say every. Ah, yes. You were the one that said that's the truth. That's, that's what she said. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, We shall not eat of it, neither shall we touch it. Yes, yes. I said, Okay, it's a lie. The question is, why that same tree? Because we never do. Tell Adam. Hello? Because Satan was a man, uh, sorry, Adam was a man, and perhaps he was just too strong when it comes to decision. So Satan had to look for the weakest. And decide to use the woman. Now, what am I trying to say here? Until God says, don't do it. It is not a temptation. And this was where my wife got lost yesterday. <laughs> Until God says what? Don't do it. It is not a temptation. when God said don't eat that one I said that's okay since that is the one God said they should not eat which means if I make them eat it I have succeeded in making them break it up so he used that same tree that same fruit that God has said stay away from as a temptation to Eve, who later gave the fruit to Adam. And when Adam saw the fruit, Adam cannot tell me he didn't recognize what the fruit. He ate it because his mind was actually desiring the fruit. But he was just waiting for who would bring it to him.
When God says, avoid women, how many of you know that even from that period, that is when women start coming? Check all the things in the Bible God says don't do, don't do. In fact, those are the things you are mainly tempted with every day of your life. Huh? When God said, bring ye all your tithe to my house. And let's say you earn 120,000. What is your tithe there? Talk to me, church. If you are not talking, you should not pay tithe. How many of you know that normally you can spend 12,000 for your head as a lady? Eh? And you won't feel it. You, you tell yourself it's normal. You can even take 12,000 and buy one shirt. Eh? Yes, sir. It's not a big deal. Some of us, the palm sandals we wear from his 50 day. One time I walked into a, a, a shop where they sell clothes in the moon. And I was pricing one shirt. Nickel share. You say 120,000. I said, I was calculating the number of snakes. Those the short nickel say But there are people they will buy it. It's not a big deal. But the moment God now say, bring that 12,000 as tight, it becomes a problem. It becomes too big. It becomes a big deal. It becomes a temptation. How many of you go through your experience what I'm saying? How do you begin to say, ah, a whole 12,000. Problem in the saloon. It's not a problem when you use it to buy shirt. Three hundred and fifty thousand naira. It's not a problem when you use it to buy phone. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. But when the pastor said we need something to charge and it's three hundred and fifty thousand, it becomes wahala. It becomes too big. Ah! Three hundred and fifty thousand. But don't carry it. You drop it on the altar. Am I mad? <laughs> you get costly. But you are holding a phone, but even more than. God be help us. Amen. Why is it that naturally on a very good day when pastor has not declared a fast you can even stay a whole day without eating? What? But the moment pastor said we are fasting today Nine, eight, you are already hungry. You are looking for a yes, child. Tell your friend. The way this the lady told me this morning. I need to take something. I need to take something. I need to take something. Satan always wants you to fault. 
I don't know if you hear you have stayed a day. You even forgot to eat. Let me see you. I'm just stay a day. You forget to eat. But when they say fasting, it's a problem. Eh? Does it amaze you? You see a man when you go, you see the wife very beautiful, but it is work pele pele. Outside, that is, is is so loyal to her. Calls her all kind of pet name. Gives her all kind of praises that should have come to the wife. Am I talking to somebody? He's a champion outside, but at home he's a failure. He can tell a hey, girl outside, baby, you're beautiful, you're looking kinky, you're looking fantastic, you're looking caucastic, but the wife at home. The only time you said that was when they married. Five years now, he has not said that. Anything you do against your wife that she does not know, you are actually doing it to yourself. Every act of cheating that a man does actually reduces his favor. You don't know. It reduces your favor. It reduces your glory. That is why, the reason of today's service, those things God has said you should not do that you are doing, it ends today. As I know you will not know it. I don't know it very often. It ends today. Oh, they see your hand. Come and talk to me. Where is the bucket? That's how to know that you are truly born again. It tends to only see that come on. It tends to know that come on. Come on. Now, Pastor is not saying it will be running your account. Yeah, I know you have to do that. We're running that now. Now we are talking of this is a character building service. Oh, you don't want to come out so that your wife will not ask you, my husband, why you come out? One time I sat down, I began to talk to myself. I said, You have a beautiful wife. When last you look at her and say, Baby, you are kinky, you are beautiful. What is wrong with me? Your wife deserves everything, especially when you have a good one. Some thief when they can't. 
ask them. They will not ask them. What message do you have for those outside that are assisting you? They will begin to advise them. My brother, if you are watching me now, stealing is not good. Because as at that point, they've come to the, their senses. And when they want to commit this sin, the sense of reasoning disappears. Jesus cried and said, Father, Luke 15, 17, Father, forgive them. Luke 15. Okay, this is a prodigal song, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and when he came to himself, I, I, I also want to take that, but that's not what I want to read. Okay, Luke 23. Luke 23, verse 34. Luke 23. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Tell somebody, you don't know what you are doing. Look for three persons and tell them you don't know what you are doing. You have a beautiful wife at home and you are running after a lady outside. My brother, you don't know what you are doing. You don't know. You have a faithful husband at home and you are still committing adultery. You don't know what you are doing. You don't know. You don't have a clue of what you are doing. That fruit will mess you up. It will mess you up. May God not use you to destroy your spouse. Amen. So that is to say, if God is saying I should avoid this thing, if God is saying I should stay away from this thing, which automatically means that if I can stay away from this thing, I will remain in the garden because it was their disobedience that took them out of the garden. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. How many of you know that today our fight now as believers, we are actually fighting our way back to the garden. Because the garden as I did, was a place of no work. Everything was there. Everything man needed to be comfortable was there. God gave man a better life. It was disobedience that threw him out. So today, we are not trying to go back to our original destiny. That is to say, man would have remained in the garden if he had avoided the fruit. Whatever that will cause you to fall this year, may grace keep you away from it. Pray for seven persons. Tell them you will not fall. You will not fail. I'm not satisfied. Stand up and say to seven persons, you will not fall, you will not fail. Jude 1. 24. Everybody, let's do it. Now, I'm told you that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory in a city job. Why would God want to keep us from falling? Because there is nothing good about it. For a man to be up today and down tomorrow is not the will of God. That is why I say God is able to keep you from falling. May the hand of God keep you this.
this year from falling. Yeah. You will not fall from that relationship. Yeah. You will not fall from that marriage. Yeah. You will not fall from your financial status. Yeah. Rather, you shall go higher, higher, and higher. The Bible said the part of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. You are not permitted to fall. In your case, Satan has failed. Sit down. Do not plan to rise if you are planning to fail. Disgrace temptation. So that you can what? Disgrace temptation. This is our month of overcoming trials, overcoming temptations. Temptation is the examination of every believer. Every believer will be tempted, including me. For every temptation you overcome, grants you promotion. How did I know? When you read the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it was after they stood their ground and refused to bow. At the end of the whole scenario, the king promoted them. Yes, sir. If you don't bow, you will not bow. Yes. If you don't bow, you will be promoted. But if you bow, you remain in that level. You remember where? Yeah. So what is temptation? Because if we can overcome temptation, then we will remain in the garden of Eden. So what is temptation? Temptation number one is an invitation. Temptation is what? Is an invitation, it is not a commandment. Because when someone invites you, you can choose not to go. But when someone commands you, you don't have option. So temptation is not a commandment, it is what? An invitation. So when something is telling you, do it. Do this thing. God has given you the power to say no or to say yes. Because it is only an invitation. Number two, temptation is an enticement. Enticement is something that will harm you but they are telling you that it will make you feel better something that will kill you they are telling you it will heal you you may decide to wake up with a new year resolution this year and say your resolution this year is to lose weight but you will agree with me that it does not mean that ice cream and chocolate will no more look enticing. Eh? Yes, sir. It will still look enticing. 
But your resolution is what? To lose weight. But anytime you see ice cream and chocolate, you just can't. So you just tell you take small. Only. And from small you lick the food plate. Temptation is also an inducement. An inducement. An inducement is that which you use to boost response. I'm trying to take it slow today so that you, you understand. An inducement is what? Is something you use to what? To boost. But who saw it? Response. Some people tell you if you don't smoke, you can't raise it well. You have to boost your morale before you climb the stage. Eh? At least take like two rats of a bow. Before you approach it, the girl. Take two rats of go before you go for the interview. Just boost, boost that thing inside of you. Because there's this mindset that that thing will not wake up until it is, until you boost it. Until it is titillated. You have to titillate it. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Temptation is also a strong desire. A desire that suspends your ability to reason well. I don't see some people. They, they destroy, and when they are too destroyed, they come to themselves. Look at the story of the prodigal son. The Bible said, when he came to himself. That is to say, when he was asking the father to give him his own share, he was not him. He was under an influence. He was under what? An influence. Every negative influence that makes you make silly mistakes, silly decisions, I break its backbone in the name of Jesus. There are married people. When they just take that thing, they begin to beat their wife. And when the thing subdues, say, Ah, mommy, who did this for you? He says, It's you. Me? When? How? Where? I see both of them love that. The, the woman will not hold it. Oh, I know it was not you. <laughs> Strong desire. Many destinies today have been aborted because of temptation. And you must understand. That the higher your height, the greater your fight. When Satan perceives that this person has a glorious future, he increases their temptation. If you have someone here who ladies they naturally come around you, my brother, you need fasting and flogging. You need quick deliverance. Because there is something Satan has said, and he wants to through the ministry of Delilah. Watch it. Well done, sir. And that's how you are telling your friends, I don't know, I don't just know. I think they are our family. That's what they like me. You they like me. Like. This is a tree for me. Now you're going to the tree. (laughs) 
and your confu confused friends. It's too tough now, too soft now. Only you now, you now. Too much now. The wise friend will tell you, Ross, you need prayer. You need what? Prayer. You need prayer. That thing almost crumbled my destiny. You just see them running. Brruh, 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 brruh. Ah! Quickly! Not for deliverance. Hands and legs were laid on me. Because the only person that is supposed to love you is one person. One, one. You are not created for, for five, two, or three. You are created for one person. Are you still here? Yes, sir. So, sir, how do I overcome temptation? Because I want to fulfill my destiny. So how do I tackle this thing? Now we're going to use Joseph as a subject. Genesis 37 verse 2. Genesis 37 verse 2. We all know the story of Joseph. We all know what happened to Joseph. But at the end of it, Joseph fulfilled his destiny. Despite all he went through. And there is a message for someone here this morning. No matter what you have faced in life, God is saying I should tell you that he's taking you somewhere. Yeah. You are, it is getting tough because, or tougher because, your destiny, the destiny you are commanding, the stars you carry, is a glorious one. The higher your height, the greater your fight. The first thing I discovered about Joseph. I discovered that Joseph uphold his father more than his brothers. Anytime the brothers do evil, he does not join them. Rather, the Bible said, he will what? And Joseph brought unto his father their evil reports. He reports them. If I've ever been a victim of what I'm saying now in the family, huh? when you always report your brothers, they will so hate you. And they will always beat you when your father is not around. But despite the beatings, he maintained his time. You can control who inflates you. Yes, so since I, I, I don't know, when they don't say do it, I do it. No, you have this power in you to decide what to do and what not to do. Yes, Am I talking to someone? Yes, sir. Your potent God. in hell. Because when you hate what your father hates, you become your father's favorite. When you hate what God hates, you become his favorite. And as I said, they were under the law. But yet, a man singled out himself to do what is right. That everybody is doing it does not make it right. Yes, sir. Let somebody stand for something. Romans chapter 6 verse 14. 
Romans 6 14. Make us understand that we are no longer under the law, but under what? Grace. Under grace. Joseph, under the law, could control himself. God bless you that is now under grace. You have much more advantage than that young man ever had. Some of us, even if grace is sufficient, we are still ready to go our way. We are still ready to go our way. Joseph succeeded. Anybody who put God first has chosen his future first. Your future first before any other thing. And number two, Joseph pursued the ultimate instead of the immediate. Joseph pursued the ultimate instead of the immediate. Genesis 39, from verse 8 and 9, he came in contact with Potiphar's wife. And Potiphar's wife promised him heaven and earth. And the Bible said what? Everybody, let's do what you know. Everybody, I said. to commit everything in your hand. He wants to commit good health. He wants to commit good wealth into your hands. But all he needs from you is your obedience to his instructions. He refused. Receive the spirit to refuse evil. Amen. Receive the spirit to refuse evil. Amen. But you are not saying amen. Receive the spirit to refuse evil. Amen. Stretch your hand to your neighbor there. That neighbor said, Receive the spirit. Are you, are you scared of them? Stretch your hands to them. Say, Receive the spirit. Receive the spirit. To refuse evil. To refuse evil. Have you not seen some friends that can sleep with their friend's wife? Yes. Eh? Every day they always come into your house. That boy is a suspect. <laughs> you just want to come and see your, your wife. And that went. And that's how it's looking. Oh, you marry well, though. You are married. The man had been, had been disturbing his friend's wife. Disturb, disturb. So one day, you know, the friend was at home, and the lady was at home. One day, the, 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 the lady had to open up to the husband. I said, My husband, look at the problem. My friend is asking me out. Ah, the boss, okay, don't worry. They sent money down, plant, and planted some persons around, and took the wife to allow the guy to come. They should make sure the guy is naked before those people will come. And the guy, the woman called the woman, said, okay, I finally accepted uh, what you have to say. Ah, that's it, Jesus. Finally. Let me go and touch that thing I've been admiring for long. As he got there, he pulled his trouser, pulled everything in his pant, and the hefty man came in. Trust this generation. He put him on Facebook Live. You can't. 
cannot admire evil and not see the devil. Every time you admire evil, you are applying for a visit from the devil. Put your future first. Think of your future before you do anything. One time I said in church that some of you now you are, who are married now or by the special grace of God or you are still believing God for you already pray that God should not give you girls because you have destroyed people's children. So you don't want to act there so that nobody will come and, and destroy your own. How about that? Standing on this altar as your pastor, you go born there. You will born triplets. They will be guests. You know why they are not saying them, man? Because they are guilty. You will carry a mass investment. Yeah, yeah, life. And don't pack for the father. Somebody speaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's not playing boom, beta, 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 boom, If I have some sisters now, we hold a seed on my hand and drop on my head. <laughs> Look at somebody by your side, stretch your hand on him. Let's go back there. Yeah. For you, and I will pray for you. Habakkuk chapter two. Habakkuk 2.2 2. Uh, Everybody let's see, where do you go? And the Lord answered me and said, Try to judge and to be able to judge and to be able to judge and For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tire. That's why you wait for it. You have a future. Why you, why do you keep telling yourself you don't have a future? Because some of you now, what you are doing now is because you feel that tomorrow, you don't have hope for tomorrow. You don't believe that there is a future, so you just want to get the immediate. And God is preparing something, a glorious future for you. You were not saved to suffer. God has a plan for you. But in patience, has crumbled so many destinies. We have had countless people, especially from where I came from in Bibi, who are dead because of Yahoo Yahoo. Because they will have to involve themselves in one or two fetish things 
just to make it work. Because you want to drive Toyota Camry Mojo. You want to drive uh, Versa. You begin to inform yourself in diabolic things. Not knowing that there is no free, free meal in Satan's dining table. I was watching one on the internet. The guy was vomiting money himself. Is he red cloth on himself? Ah, vomiting money. For what now? For what? The guy ran to me in the program I went to in uh, Kuala State. He said, I should pray for him. I said, what? He said, his life is in danger. I said, why? That uh, he went somewhere. Uh, he's into computer. I said, okay. That he went somewhere. That they said he should bring the mother. He called the screen. The mother's face did not show. It was her leg that showed. They said, if the face of the mother does not show, they are going to use it for ritual. And I said, cross. They have to use you. <laughs> so you would have step your mother's life. There was a big boy one time, I came across him in Ghana. They call him Wana uh, something. Wana Wana something. They call him what kind of thing. He sacrificed 150 children. Killed all his sisters. He was very rich. But it was kind. The only person remaining in the family was the mother. And he said, You bring your mother. But the woman was a praying woman. And the team backfired. They are pursuing the imitate. Imitate. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 21. You see the story of Gehazi. God instructed the prophet. Elisha, not to collect the offering that was coming from Nema, the leprous man. But we're told, what happened? That Gehazi followed after Nema. And when Nema saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariots to meet him and said, It's all well. And he said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Behold, even now they're, they're, uh, just to collect the offerings. And finally, he collected the offerings and ended up inheriting leprosy. The destiny of every do evildoer is leprosy. The destiny of every evildoer is leprosy. If you must go far in life, you must reject Potiphar. You must reject what? Stand up on your feet. You must reject who? Lift your hands above heaven. We we'll take a prayer. Father. Say, Father. Father. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. Don't allow the devil to take me away. Don't allow the devil to take me away. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Don't allow the devil to take me away.
Lift those hands up, both hands up. I feel it. Those in the house. May God do for you what you can't do for yourself. So how are you? Can I pray for you? Stand there. Let mama help you with our mind. I just saw a light. Shift back on it. Take three steps back. So you have anything to do with Imo? Yes. Yes, sir. I'm from Imo State. Hallelujah. You know me? I've, I've been coming here. Like how many times? Up to four times. Who spoke? Yeah, the first day I came here. You talk? You prophesied for me. anybody call Richmond? That's my name. Richmond. In Kezota. In Kezota. Yes, sir. What's the Kezota? You can't forget. What's the As a power. Can I pray for you, sir? Yes, sir. Let's take 
this prayer. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. father. As I begin to pray. As I begin to pray. As your daughter Max plus one. As your daughter Max plus one. As we celebrate our mother in the Lord. As we celebrate our mother in the Lord. As I celebrate my mother in the Lord. As I celebrate my mother in the Lord. Cause men to also celebrate me. Cause men to also celebrate me. Open your mouth and make it sound. Cause men to also celebrate me. As you must for sure today. As you celebrate our cause men to also celebrate me. Pray, pray, pray. Oh, I was talking to you. When? Thursday. Something like Jew, Jew, Jew. As we are standing there, I'm seeing a masquerade standing with you. Is she? Is she? Is you? Is you? Yeah. Oh, that thing. Oh, that thing. Oh, that thing. Come on, sir. Masculines. I don't have anything to do with masculine, just that I like in your village. Yeah. Are they masculines? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. You don't like them? No. I you don't, don't like them? I don't like them, but I like watching their activities. <laughs> with a masquerade. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you don't like them? You don't like them? I see you, I see you standing, the masquerade standing, a lady standing. Yes, sir. Who is that lady? It's my cousin's sister. And you don't like her?
Jesus. Is it you? What's your name? I said Stella, why didn't you come? Come to this man. You called her now? Actually, I, I, you. I called her and she did not be so I called her mom. I'm sending this. Something like chica, 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 my brother, eh? my brother, my brother. Yeah. This person also calling Andy. Yes, sir. Power. Power. <laughs> Open your two hands. yourself holding money. Yes, sir. The very sincere. Yes, sir. You see yourself holding money. Yes, sir. But the physical. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. I want to put it in your hand. Amen. Because your time has come. Amen. You believe I'm the servant of God? I do. Eh? Yes, I do. I pray for you. Something good will happen to you this morning. I, I believe. Yeah? I believe. If something good happen to you this morning, what will you do? I'll come and pay my tithes. Uh -huh. You come and see me. Amen. I like that for you. I must pray for you. Amen. I love people that always come and see me. Your time has come. Who's yeah. yeah. this one? Do you have anything to do with O R O L U? Olu. Yes, sir. I'm from Olu. Olu. Yes, sir. Yes. 
can pray. But I will pray because I need to kiss somebody. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to remove your staff from the pot. The native doctor there is saying, Don't try it. So I want to kill you so that you can be free. Yeah. 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 I saw dream life. I saw dream life. There's a lot here to do. In this service, yeah. please let's take one killing prayer. <laughs> Somebody needs to die now. Yeah. Say, My father, my father, my father, my father, whoever that has stolen my glory, whoever that has stolen my glory, return it now and die. Return it now and die.
Where's the person? Uh, he was in church uh, on Friday. On Friday, but he didn't come today. Where is he now? Uh, I can call him. Now. I think he should be. He's a winners member. He came for the program. Should I call him, sir? Call him. Okay. Come. Someone is going to die. Yeah. Who are somebody like twins in your family? My elder sister. Uh, two, two guests. Two girls on the and a boy. Triplet. Huh? Triplet, yes. They are triplets. Yes. The three of them. Yeah. I'm seeing a boy and two guests. Yes, sir. Power! Power! <laughs> Professor! Where is she now? She's in Nigeria, Lagos. Something good is going to happen in your family. Yeah. This year. Amen. This year. Amen. I stand on the strength of this testimony I'm saying coming for this young lady. Say, and I extend to every one of you there. Amen. If you connect with a seed on your hand, something good also will happen in your family. Amen. Something good will happen also in your family. Amen. I am speaking right now. From my prophetic office as a prophet, I receive. I prophesy to every one of you. I receive hands that have had your glory, hands that have stolen your destiny. I see them returning it now. Amen. I see them returning it now. Amen. I see them returning it now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I just see someone destiny, something like Michael Ojeb Ojeb Ojeb. I just saw the, the person's destiny with me. Who is that? They just they just release your destiny. Amen. 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 They just release your destiny. Amen. They just release your destiny. Amen. Amen. It is restored if you shout it. If it is restored in the name of Jesus. Azubike. 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 Chimedu. Azubike. Azubike, Chinebu. Is anybody like me? Lift your hands. Let's take one more prayer. It's, it's, it's settled. It's settled. Jesus. If I pray for just go back. Father, do it. And take the blood. Amen. Jesus. Amen. To settle. Amen. Settle. Amen. Settle. If you are a tight runner with your tight quickly. 